All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend, Victoria Law. Victoria is the editor of Tenacious Art and Writings from Women in Prison. She is the co-founder of Books Through Bars, as well as the author of Resistance Behind Bars, The Struggles of Incarcerated Women, all of which and more you can find at victorialaw.net. Victoria, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me again. All right, so Victoria, recently you've done several pieces on domestic violence survivors who are in prison. Um, let's, let's begin with one you did for Truth Out, covering a woman named Kelly Savage. Tell us about Kelly. So Kelly Savage is a woman who is currently incarcerated on a life without the possibility of parole sentence, and she's a domestic violence survivor. And she, the title of my piece is actually Why is California Keeping Kelly Savage in Prison for a Crime She Didn't Commit? Because Kelly Savage actually didn't harm anyone. Kelly was in an abusive relationship. She had two children. And she actually had plans to escape her abusive husband. So she had bus tickets. She had a little bit of money squirreled away. She had family members who were willing to help her get off the bus and then find a place that her husband wouldn't be able to find her or her children. And 15 hours before her bus was scheduled to leave, her husband beat and killed her three-year-old son. And because she had not left the relationship sooner, because there was a history of abuse in both that relationship and in her previous relationship, um, the prosecutor used this as a way to say that Kelly was an accomplice to this murder. She had permitted her husband to abuse this boy and kill this boy and basically should be charged the same as he was. And they were both convicted and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. So what we're seeing here is a way in which the criminal punishment system punishes survivors of domestic violence for not leaving sooner or for not acting sooner, or even for being in these types of relationships where violence happens. I mean, it really, it's just one of those things where it really just goes to show how messed up uh, and how how little the criminal justice system actually gets about uh, the dynamics of people who are trapped in abusive relationships and how little they actually understand the psychology behind it. Um, the fact that, that, that they would you know, charge her, and, and now she's suspending life in prison behind this, it, it is, is really just, it, it's heartbreaking. It is. It is. And also, I, as part of the piece, I read over her, um, her, trans, uh, her petitions for um, habeas corpus or the right to a new trial based on lack of expert testimony around battering. And her case happened in the mid to late 1990s. So her son was killed in 1995. She went to trial three years later. So you would think by 1998, we as a society would have some understanding of battering, domestic violence, battered women syndrome. And instead, the prosecutor used all of this against her to say that she enjoyed these beatings, that she allowed her husband to beat her son um, in order to please him and to keep him, and that basically she jumped from relationship to relationship looking for, you know, people who would be even more abusive than the previous person. So you would think that the, you know, if our system is actually set up to protect people from violence and from harm and from abuse, we would recognize that um, Kelly Savage herself was a victim of violence and abuse. She was not a perpetrator of any sort of harm. Um, And we would also wonder why we don't have resources to help people get out of these situations before harm occurs, such as an abuser harming either his spouse or the children. I mean, so, I mean, jumping ahead a little bit to my piece in the nation, um, Mm -hmm. I talk about a woman named Barbara Sheehan, who after 25 years of marriage, killed her abusive spouse when he pointed a gun at her and threatened to kill her. She fired that, uh, she fired a gun back at him and killed him and is now serving time in prison for that. So she's being penalized because she fought back. Kelly Savage is being penalized because Apparently, she didn't fight back and so therefore condoned this type of violence. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. 